Let's take a look down under with this week's Fish Eye View, sponsored by Mercury, number one on the water. When it comes to sport fishing, the province of Ontario steals the show as having the finest in the world. A big component is the fact that the province borders on four of the Great Lakes, home to an incredible trout and salmon fishery. While the U.S. claims more fish due to heavy stocking, Ontario has the other side of the pond beat when it comes to water quality, number of rivers, and in particular, wild production of steelhead. Nearly all of Ontario's migratory rainbow trout have evolved into local strains during the course of more than 75 years of intense fishing pressure. A real breed apart, they're substantially smarter than stocked fish. Steelheaders have also had to evolve. The widely popular center pin reel and float fishing were introduced to steelheading in 1970. Many of the innovations now standard in the sport were actually developed in Ontario. It's amazing the level to which steelheaders have refined their finesse techniques. Even so, they occasionally walk away, proclaiming these fish as having PhDs in avoidance. And it doesn't matter how many are stacked up down there. But with a few new tricks up your sleeve, it's still possible to consistently put fish on the bank when others can't. If you're looking for the very best in Great Lakes steelhead, the autumn runs are hard to beat. On arrival, they're in prime condition, full, bright, and powerful. Though regulations limit places to be fished, you can stretch it well past freeze-up. In spite of all this, spring steelheading remains part of a long-standing tradition. After opening day, spawning is generally completed. Showing a few nicks, dents, and other war wounds, these dropbacks are hungry and ready for action. Row is the number one choice for every angler out there. In short order, steelhead learn to avoid this bait, even if you wave it in their face. Well-prepared steelheaders carry an arsenal of alternative baits. Crazy row imitations are first up and usually draw a fish or two. Then it's time for worms, real or otherwise. Small, hot pink imitations are particularly deadly. They're no big secret, though some are much more effective than others. With the right stuff, it's a matter of scent and taste. They take it and eat it. During underwater filming, we experiment with many different products. We discovered that Steelhead are crazy about Berkeley's Atomic Teaser. Designed mainly for panfish, the various color patterns all produce. With a bouncing action, we provoke countless spring Steelhead into an aggravated bite. Steelhead are one of those fish you can enjoy on your own terms. From fly fishing to open water trolling and even ice fishing, there are no set rules other than local laws. When it comes to river run fish, most anglers prefer big water to ply their sport. From the Great Lakes to the West Coast, there are countless smaller rivers that also host runs of steelhead. Simply check provincial regulations to find these gems, some of which are surprisingly skinny flows. From autumn to spring, it takes bang on timing to intersect a run, which means substantial rainfall to bring fish up. Keep a close eye on the weather and put yourself into a situation just like this. Small waters demand a quiet approach, similar to fishing resident brookies and browns. Keep a low profile and move about slowly. It's also a good idea to leave those long steelhead rods at home. Even a nine footer will become a nuisance in the bush. To prove this point, our underwater cameraman Rick borrowed his granddaughter's rod for a day of small water steelheading. Yes, this may look completely ridiculous, but it worked and did so incredibly well. Several fish were landed, then released in swim away condition. As a matter of fact, it proved to be a heck of a lot of fun. In Rick's own words, thank God nobody I knew saw me that day.